said he had a knack for refuse. He's the hungry fairy. Hey everybody, so today we're going to be testing the crew. If you want to see the unboxing, please watch the previous video. So first we're going to do a quick run. I took 12 grams of coffee and grinded it into trusty Hario Skirton. On the pour over setting on the skirting, it produces a wide range of grinds. Hopefully the crew will clean this up. I'm using the 800 and 400 sleeve, which was recommended by crew. To use is pretty simple, just dump the grinds on the top and start sifting. They recommend this motion for about a minute. The setting that I was on actually produced a large number of boulder grinds. I decided to not waste the coffee and try to reduce that amount. Crew says you could take the boulders and re-grind them, and hopefully reduce the amount. I did this roughly about five times, and each time it did reduce the amount of boulders. Increased the yield for the brewable coffee, but at the same time it also increased the fines. But I got it down to a fairly small amount, just a couple of grams, where I had a decent amount of regular brewing coffee. But I generated a lot of fines with that. First time using it, it generated a lot of waste. I technically have 5 grams that was unusable from 12 grams. Next I want to try the coarse ground on the skirt for the French press coffee. I used the recommended 1000 sleeve and the 600 sleeve. The skirt and other grinders have a huge problem with coarse. This is where most grinders have the most difficulty. Coffee grinds go into groove and now we start sifting. And about a minute later, we have three levels. And you see on the top level, there's a huge amount of boulders that are extremely large. There's a little bit of brewing coffee and a fair amount of fines. Skirton has trouble of course because the way the burrs are mounted. You notice when you spin the handle, the burrs start moving around. There's a lot of wiggle in that. I weighed it out, and you can see this huge spread. For the French press, I'll probably keep the media and the boulders in there, and dump out the fines. The reason why I don't want the fines is usually the press doesn't filter that out. Fines generally also is bitterness in the coffee. But because it's an immersion, you most likely won't have under extraction of boulders. On the skirting, I had a huge spread for the pour over coffee. I wanted to see if I could tighten that up and see if I could get better ratios. So I started adjusting it back and forth and I was able to get a pretty decent ratio. My goal was to reduce the boulders and fines and have the most amount of usable brewable coffee. I wanted to test some other grinders and see how their breakdowns would be. One solid favorite of the coffee world is the Lidl series. I loaded up the Lidl 2 with grinder setting 9, and this is the spread I got. The ratio is actually pretty good. I have 9.3 grams of usable coffee. So in general, I probably have to grind a little bit more, and I'll probably get the full 12 in this. 
At the same time, I also could decide not to include the fines, keep the boulders, or may even do vice versa. Uh, again, with these sleeves, it gives you the option of manipulating the flavor profile of the coffee. Fines are related to bitterness. Boulders are usually related to sourness. This is maybe something you want to adjust. The next one I tested was the rock grinder. Many people like the rock grinder consistency a lot. The ratios within the grinds were also very good. I got 9.1 grams of usable. It produced a very similar amount to the Lidl 2. I also wanted to see the spread on more commercial machines. So I went to my local roaster with their very expensive grinder, probably about three to $4,000. And this is the ratio I got. The profile is a little bit different from the Lido on the Rock. It may be because I use an espresso grind. This is something I have to look into in the future. I also noticed with all the brewing methods, it produces a more bubbly and foamy coffee. Most likely because it's more uniform, it's able to release more gas evenly. You may have to bloom the coffee for a little while longer. You're probably wondering what the brew tastes like with the sifter. From trying out different recipes for espresso, pour over, and french press, I found out generally throughout, they are less sour and they're also less bitter. The sifting is definitely altering the flavor profile of each brew. Now, this may be very fun for some people to do. Um, I necessarily would not do it for every single brew. I will tell you most likely I will do it for every single french press is I don't like the grittiness within the coffee. But for pour over, it may not be necessary if you have a very good grinder. The crew, depending on which package, could be very expensive. I would actually recommend to use the money first to our better grinder. I don't recommend buying the crew along with a lower price grinder to try to make it perform as well as a more expensive grinder. You're gonna end up wasting a lot of time and coffee. Reprocessing the boulders actually take a fair amount of time and also takes a fair amount of coffee. Using the sifters, you're definitely going to have some coffee that you're definitely going to throw out or reuse for some other purpose. The cleaning of it is not too bad, but it's more pieces to wash. These are all items you have to wash afterwards and also dry. The crew is a very useful tool to have, but it's not 100% necessary. It's going to be very helpful for me to calibrate my grinders. It'll tell you the profile of your grinder and how well it will grind. It's definitely something fun to play with, but it's probably not going to be in my daily routine. When you get a chance, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.